The blackout period will begin at 52 minutes, 42 minutes after the hour. Elliot C. is uh, engaging in a little facetious questioning of seven. He's asked him if the Delta P lights were out. Of course, the adapter section with those fuel cells uh, left the spacecraft just prior to retrofire. And Borman confirms that, in fact, the Delta P lights, which have been on most of the period of this 14-day flight, are indeed out. The adapter section of the spacecraft uh, drops off first. The spacecraft will emerge from blackout at 57 minutes, 45 seconds after the hour. And Hawaii now has put in a call to 7. Let's listen. Was that what it was, the retrofire? Mm. 298. Roger, copy. What's the rest of them? Okay, give me your left and your down at retrofire. Left is three, down is 112. Okay, we copy that. How you doing? Fine. Okay, attitudes at retrofire? Say again? What were your attitudes at retrofire? Uh, nominal. Auto or manual retro? Auto. All retros fired normally? All retros normal. Okay, very good. You're looking real good. Your RCS seems to be holding real well. Your secondary O2 is right in there. Big checkpoint for. Could you give us an uh, AOS and LOS name, please? Will do, Clay. That's the acquisition of the signal and loss of signal uh, for the tracking station, which that message is being addressed. The next big checkpoint comes at uh, 49 minutes after the hour, uh, about this 10 is minutes from now. Control. We should uh, be getting a summary of the values on board now coming in from Hawaii. Chris Graff has asked for it. Entirely satisfied with the retro maneuver and all events up to this point. Hawaii is reading out the temperatures of his his uh, rings out in the forward nose of the section. Hawaii wraps up his summary by saying he's looking real good. There is actually a very little that can happen. And in some spacecraft. six minutes, we should acquire the spacecraft by Guaymas, Mexico, as it begins its letdown over the states. In that 21 minutes between retrofire and the 400,000 foot level control, where atmosphere Houston. begins, uh, there is virtually nothing that can happen to the spacecraft. The law of uh, physics uh, takes over. Uh, the, if the retrofire sequence is proper and in the uh, proper uh, time sequence and uh, at the right uh, velocity, 2,500 pounds of thrust from each of the engines and if the attitude of the spacecraft has been properly positioned before the retrofire, uh, then from there on out, it's a simple matter of the spacecraft having been slowed down uh, breaking that delicate balance between its speed, its centrifugal speed and getting off of the Earth's surface, and the pull of gravity. That is broken when the speed is lowered and gravity begins to take over again and the spacecraft returns at the precise point where it had been planned. Uh, the, it re-enters the atmosphere at uh, 8.49.30 according to the pre-planned information here and uh, that's uh, about another uh, what, five, it's uh, about eight minutes from now, nine minutes from now. At that point, uh, then another sequence of events begins, uh, carefully monitored, and uh, it's another one of those critical points in flight, the finger cross area, when uh, the position of the spacecraft and its uh, attitude uh, when atmosphere takes over and the great fireball develops uh, around it, was it reaches 3,000 degrees of heat and it's 
wild 17,000 mile an hour, a little less than that, 15,000 miles at that point, mile an hour plunge back into the drag of the Earth's atmosphere and that extreme uh, friction is built up. We have reported to you a little earlier this morning that Borman and Lovell have expressed a desire to leave the spacecraft upon its arrival back on the surface of the Atlantic rather than riding it up to the carrier deck. Uh, Dr. Chuck Berry, the astronaut's uh, physician, has said he'd prefer for them to ride the spacecraft to the WASP, but uh, obviously the choice, as it always has been, will be up to them. It would, uh, as far as Berry feels, uh, jeopardize uh, some of his uh, medical data if Borman and Lovell leave the spacecraft. They'd like to have them uh, get out of the spacecraft for the first time right there in the carrier deck when uh, they can uh, be medically monitored even as they leave the spacecraft and then immediately taken to the uh, sick bay where the medical equipment is all ready to test them rather than have them go through a period of maybe 10 or 15 or 20 minutes uh, in a helicopter before they get back. Uh, Borman and Lovell have both, in the last uh, 48 hours, indicated some of the, uh, perhaps, a little testiness that uh, might be expected after two weeks cooped up in that area, hardly the size of the front seat of a compact car, sitting in one position there in their uh, spacecraft, uh, with uh, no ability, of course, to bathe or to shave. Uh, they, you know, on Thursday, uh, when they first began to run into trouble with their fuel cell, or at least first to analyze that two of the six sections of the fuel cell were out, uh, they suggested that maybe they'd better come back on Friday morning rather than wait till this morning. Uh, that uh, was ruled out. Uh, on a long search of information on Thursday night and the determination that there was plenty of uh, energy left in those fuel cells to uh, get them through this retrofire period. Uh, the, that was ruled out and then uh, uh, yesterday uh, they seemed a little bit uh, touchy in a couple of the conversations with the ground. And now they're saying they want to get out of that spacecraft just as quickly as possible. Sir <coughs> Certainly understandable for these two 37-year-old test pilots They've done a remarkable job in space, and just a remarkable job in surviving out there for two weeks and keeping tempers on such an even keel. These are pictures, as the uh, data there suggests to you, live via satellite from uh, the aircraft carrier WASP some 700 miles uh, southeast of Cape Kennedy. Incidentally, through the facilities of the early bird satellite, which is relaying these pictures from the WASP back to the United States, through Eurovision and Intervision, uh, the uh, cooperative networks that cover the European continent, our CBS News coverage of this return of Gemini 7, including these downrange pool pictures from the WASP, uh, starting at uh, 9 a.m. Uh, this morning, are going to uh, all of Europe including Moscow. The Moscow television has said at least that they will take this coverage of ours. So the Russian people are going to get a view of our astronauts uh, Borman and Lovell returning from the mission which has broken all previous endurance records, has gone uh, almost four times uh, the, uh, uh, well it's about three times as long as the best Russian flight. And here now Paul Haney. Miles. And let's uh, listen as this conversation ensues. Okay, attitudes at retrofire. Say again? What were your attitudes at retrofire? Phenomenal. Uh, Auto or manual retro? Auto. All retros fired normally? All retros normal. Okay, very good. You're looking real good. Your RCS seems to be holding real well. Your secondary O2 is right in there. He's in re-entry. Give us an... Uh, AOS and LOS main, please. We'll do flight. Okay, flight is ring A is 2275, ring B 2375. These are meter readings. Roger. He's looking real good. He's looking real good down here. Roger. What, are your, what is your main bus voltage, uh, Hawaii? 23.9 on the meter. Roger that. Not too much RCS activity, a little yaw, not much. 
you ready for a GET time hack, a plus count? Roger. Okay, set up seven minutes and 30 seconds. Seven minutes and 30 seconds on my mark. Five, four, three, two, one, mark. Roger. Okay. Fly to right. Go ahead, away. Okay, is 1218 readouts, uh, 2250 on ring A, 2350 on ring B. Looks real good. Main bus voltage, 23 decimal 8. Roger. Your RCS is holding real good. Your main bus voltage is reading 23 decimal 8, real fine. Fine, we just came out with the second six man. Say again? We just turned six man, one and two on. Power, Roger. Any backup guidance on this side? Negative that. Okay. We'll wait till we get some state data in. Roger. You're holding real good here on the ground. Thank you. We still don't have much of a horizon. Say again? I said we still don't have much of a horizon. Uh, Roger. You should have a daylight horizon, shouldn't we? Uh, stand by on that. It'll be after 350,000 before he has a lit horizon. All right, you'll be below 350K before you have a lit horizon. Thank you. And as you come up towards my LOS, you're looking real fine. We'll be seeing you. Bye, bye.